also Trump Care 3.0, 2.0. I'm not quite sure at this point, but I do know uh, that we will we'll be talking at length about Trump Care, what that means uh, for people's health care, but also the political realities of what just happened. Because for all of the uh, spiking the football and beer bashes in the Rose Garden, uh, this was, if anything, maybe the first quarter that we have seen uh, now. And there is a lot more to go on the battle for Trump care. And it is a, a, a very interesting story. I, I, I want to really walk through what the next steps are going to look like. And to me, it is seeming more and more that Trump care is going to be Donald's Obamacare. And I mean that in that politically, the fight is actually going to be the same thing that happened uh, with Obamacare that I was involved in, where I spent two years of my life fighting to expand Medicare, fighting to put some regulations on health insurers. I was fighting to have a public option as a step uh, towards single payer. And it was a it was such an arduous journey. And I spent two years of my life, but I probably lost about six years of my life on the back end during that fight. And what we came to was Obamacare, which, you know, I, it, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't Medicare for all, which also won't be perfect. But uh, Obamacare was a step in the right direction. I knew personally that I was fighting to expand Medicaid, that millions of people who didn't have health care would have health care. And that was what I, when I would dig deep, you know, on the late nights when we were working and through this grueling process, that's what I knew I was fighting for. And that's what drove me. And it's just, I, I can't quite wrap my head around, like, where do the people who are pushing Trump care, when they dig deep, what are they digging, right? Like, ah, I got to work late again to make sure that 24 million people don't have access to health coverage and Children uh, with pediatric cancer will not be able to find coverage because their premiums will be skyrocketing. Like, what is it that drives the people who are fighting to rip health care away? Uh, and I'm, I'm joined in studio by Wendell Potter to talk about that with me, who also uh, was fighting on Obamacare at the same time and know that it was a really grueling process. And now I think that Trump care is going to look similar to that fight with Obamacare. So these are all the topics that we're going to uh, try to cover in the show today. And uh, we'll start off with Wendell Potter uh, to talk about Trump care. And um, I, I kind of want to test my thesis with you if, if you think this is going to look like the 18 months or so yeah. that it took, right, to get through the whole process for Obamacare. I do. I absolutely agree with you. Unless we see members of the Senate just shutting it down because they would recognize that what is coming over from the House is such a catastrophe of, of a piece of legislation that it might uh, might not go on that, that long. But it seems apparent that, uh, uh, that Trump feels that he needs to fulfill his campaign promise to repeal and, and maybe replace Obamacare. I like that. Maybe replace yeah, now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think it, I think you're right. It could be very arduous. And I think that, that, that he probably and some of the Republicans who have uh, all these years saying we've got to do this are finding out that uh, touching health care is really touching the third rail of politics in many ways. It can be very dangerous. So uh, Wendell Potter, uh, as everyone on the a great friend of the program, so everyone knows, is a truth teller and whistleblower who really you were instrumental in exposing the malfeasance of the insurance industry, showing that the insurance industry are quite close to evil in their uh, business practices, which is take our money, deny our care. Right. Um, that's how they made money. Obamacare did many things, but some of them were actually just regulations on the insurance industry to just take away their worst practices, exactly right. like pre-existing conditions. That's exactly right. Some of the, the biggest benefits uh, uh, of, of Obamacare um, were the additional regulations that, that were so long overdue. Yeah, the, the practices of the insurance industry, which were, were perfectly legal until the Affordable Care Act was enacted, uh, resulted in almost 50 million Americans not having insurance. I mean, they were directly responsible for that 
for that predicament. And we're talking about, you know, often when you say 50 million, you just think of a number, but we're talking about uh, human beings here, men, women, and children who just simply could not get coverage. And they often couldn't get coverage because insurance companies, in many cases, blackball them, declare them uninsurable, or increase their 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 rates so much that they simply couldn't afford them. So that's why uh, we had such a problem, and it's why it was so important to address the practices of the insurance industry first off. First off. So the arduousness of the process that we went through is the House just passed. Let's do Trump care. To, to, the House just passed something. Right. Now it's going to move over to the Senate, and all the news is already saying the Senate is not going to go with what the House passed because they yeah. can't. That's pretty normal that the House and the Senate pass two different things because they're two different bodies. Very typical. And then there's a third thing that happens, which is the conference committee, yeah. where you take these two different things and you kind of mush them together, and uh, a selection of senators and a selection of members of the House are in that conference committee, and they come up with a bill that is a blend of the right. two. And then that bill goes back to the House and back to the Senate for another full vote on the floor. Exactly. So, I mean, just that's the process. They yeah. just had a beer bash in the <laughs> in the Rose Garden, right, with that whole mission accomplished uh, thing going on. Right. For the first, sm and, and maybe you, you might disagree with me on this one, but I think the House is the easiest of them all. Like, they, they're, oh, right? It's like, yeah. they're celebrating, and it took them three tries yeah. to get it uh, through the House. So, yeah. do you, th I, I don't understand if, if, if Donald doesn't know that it's going to be this hard, um, but if they're going to, if the Senate doesn't just throw this away and say, we're not doing health care, uh, this, I see it eating up the first 18 months of his, administration and them not really being able to work on much else. Well, that's absolutely what's going to happen. And it's going to, it's going to overshadow just about anything else that he does uh, because uh, it, it does, that process you described takes a long time, even in the best of circumstances, when you have something as contentious as health care. Uh, and within the Republican Party, as we, as we saw, uh, there are wide differences of opinion about what needs to be done. They only got it passed in the House by one vote. Uh, it's going to be a long, drawn-out thing. So um, we're going to—I want to delve into a little bit more of the policy details uh, of what is going on in uh, Trump Care and what it would actually allow the insurance companies to do again, uh, and also just some predictions of what we might see out of the Senate. Uh, with Wendell Potter, the executive director, founder of Tarbell.org, truth teller and whistleblower on the insurance industry uh, and a great friend of the program. This is the Tom Hartman Program. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program and we'll be taking your calls later in the hour.